the meeting of the Curriculum Committee for August 22nd, 2024. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Ms. Cox, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Ms. Chike Kalu? Yes, we're here. Ms. Dominowski? Here. Ms. Pumphrey? Dr. Savoy? Ms. Dolosky? Here. Thank you. Ms. Cox, please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting. Dr. DiDonato? Present. Dr. Kraft? Present. Ms. Blotner? Present. And I think that's all I see on the chat for now. Okay. Um, committee chairs will facilitate discussion by calling off names of committee members to speak in turn. Committee members will also acknowledge they have a question by calling on the chair, then stating their name. Staff members will answer any question posed by committee members by saying their name first, then speaking. Staff members that want to add any discussion may call on the chair to speak, then saying their name. If the chair calls for any motions, the committee member will move and say their name, and a second committee member will second and say their name. The chair will then state, may I have a roll call vote, please. Assistants will speak each committee member for their vote and record appropriately for the um, ETA. Um, before we get started, um, thank you everybody for attending this afternoon. This is our first meeting with our newish board. Um, many of our members were on the board last year, um, but we have two new members. We have um, Dr. Savoy, who I'm not sure is on yet, and we also have our student board member is part of ours. So um, welcome to Ms. Chika Kalu. Um, and we are trying our very hardest to um, learn your name and your phonetic spelling um, really helped me. So thank you. Um, I just wanna let our new board members um, know that's something that we started with curriculum committee, um, I don't know, last year or even the year before was that staff under the guidance of Dr. DiDonato will put together voice over PowerPoints for each of the items that we are um, going to talk about. So if you went on to board docs prior to this meeting and you pulled up the agenda, you'll see the attachments, um, but they are also voice over. Um, and that voice over then allows us to kind of do our pre-work before we get here so that we're not spending time on a lot of background information, we have more time to answer questions. So I'm not sure if you saw that. Did you, did you you're shaking your head. Um, so, okay, so you saw that. Um, so it really has helped us kind of facilitate the work of this committee. So um, welcome and we will get started. Dr. DiDonato, do you have anything to say before we start? Uh, welcome to our new members. Glad to uh, have you guys join us. Okay. So we have three um, three pieces on um, today's agenda. The first one is the SIOP Professional Development and Materials for Teachers and Leaders contract. Again, this is what was posted on Board Docs, and Ms. Blotner is ready to answer any questions, I think. Do you just want to give like a very brief summary statement and then we'll get into any questions? Sure. Hello, Sandra Blovner. Good to see all of you and welcome to all of the new uh, board members on this committee. Um, this essentially is a professional development resources, professional development that's available um, to staff, to teachers. And the purpose of it is really to ensure that all of our staff, teachers, classroom teachers, content teachers, principals, know how to support multilingual learners so they can have greater success in their school experience. So that's the purpose of it. Um, it has eight um, components that really address things such as um, lesson preparation, assessments, um, strategies, and various resources 
and supports that can be put in place to support multilingual learners in content classes. So our goal, as we look at another, many of you probably listened to the recorded PowerPoint, but our goal is really to make sure that we continue to build capacity across our school system. Thank you for that. Um, questions from board members? Um, my question is, um, this has been going, we've been using this in the county for a while, correct? That is correct. Do you know how long we've had it, how many years? I don't know how many years being that I'm new, but I do right. know that as we started the decentralization process, the team adopted this resource to begin to kind of help to train staff that would be re-receiving re their students, their multilingual learners to their ELD programs. So that's the purpose of it. I'm hoping to continue this um, as something to that we're building capacity internally in the central office so that we're able to use those resources and do the training ourselves and customize it so that the, all of the work that we're doing around the research for better teaching, we can make sure that there's that connection is being made and the alignment is being made. So we are looking to be able to use these resources. I'm also interested in looking at CPD opportunities. I know that the language is changing as we look at certification versus licensure and so forth, but making sure that there are some opportunities for folks to be able to learn, I guess, address that one um, credit or CEUs that they need to do around supporting multilingual learners, um, culturally responsive teaching, those sorts of things. So this would be something that we would explore, and then there would be a small subset that would be continuing to receive this as a professional development opportunity. Thank you. And when you say CPD, continuing professional development. That credit. is correct. Okay. Right. I think it's continuing educator units. Okay. I know the language okay. is changing right now. Okay. Right? All right. Thank you. Um, any other questions from board members? If not, can I have a motion to um, recommend contract CWA 128-24 SIOP professional development and materials for teachers and leaders? So moved, so moved. Thank you. May I have a second? Second, Dominique. Thank you. Okay. So Thank that you. will move forward. Um, and then for for our new members, that will then move forward to the contracts committee. Um, we do need to week. do a roll call though. Oh, I'm sorry. Go <laughs> ahead. Um, Pum um Pumphrey. Chike Kalu. Yes. Da Ms. Dominowski. Yes. Ms. Solowski? Yes. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I know that Ms. Pumphrey is taking her daughter to college today, so that is where, um, why she is not in attendance. Okay, second is we'll now discuss and answer any questions about the modification digital library resources multidisciplinary research databases. And Ms. Lanza is ready to answer any questions. So um, Ms. Lanza is on vacation today. So Ms. Okay. Lanza is going to jump in um, and maybe can give a quick little overview of what this is and uh, answer any questions. OK, thank you. Sorry about that. I was just reading the script. Yes. I <laughs> Good evening or early evening, right? Good afternoon, everyone. Um, and so, yes, this presentation really kind of outlines a request for an increase of spend authority that's going to cover a one year extension uh, with ProQuest. And so that just provides continued access for research database uh, resources for our students that come in a variety of formats and covers uh, K to 12. Hey, thank you for that summary. Is there any questions from board members? Okay, hearing none, do I have a motion to approve contract ARA 210-19 modification digital library resources, multidisciplinary and research databases? So moved, Dominowski. Thank you, is there a second? Second, Stolowski. Thank you. May I have a roll call vote, please, Ms. Cox? Sure. Ms. Chike Kalu? Yes. Ms. Dominowski? Yes. Ms. Stolowski? Yes. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. 
Um, next is the school library collect. These titles just keep getting longer and longer. The school library collection resources literature for pre-K through three and pre-K through four special area classes. And Dr. Kraft is here ready to answer our questions. Is Dr. Kraft? Oh, we can't hear you, Ms. Kraft, Dr. Kraft. Oh. How about now? Yeah. OK, uh, so uh, good evening. Uh, welcome to the new members. Uh, the work that we do here is very exciting. And so we are glad you were on the journey with us. Uh, so I know that you received the presentation ahead of time. We are actually uh, this contract has already passed. What we are trying to bring awareness uh, to is these are curriculum materials that previously had been approved as library materials. Now they're being included in our new pre-K-3 and also our pre-K-4 classrooms. And so in an effort to continue to build communication and transparency, we have put them out on public display. Um, and actually before the board meeting on Tuesday, I will be sitting out in the lobby. So in addition to being able to go anytime in the next two weeks, if you actually wanna ask some questions, I'll be there um, to receive any questions from anyone in the community around the books that are being added to our curriculum. Um, and this is just really exciting, the work that we're doing around pre-K three and four. Um, and actually I just got an email that at a recent MSDE meeting that uh, BCPS was actually shouted out as a leader in the work that we're doing around early childhood. So um, I'll pause there and see if you all have any questions. Thank you, Dr. Kraft. Um, board members, are there any questions about this contract? Okay, hearing none, may I have a motion to approve contract CWA 120-23? So moved, Stolowski. So moved. Thank you. May I have a second, please? Second, Chike Kohl. Thank you. Um, Ms. Cox, roll call vote, please. Yes. Ms. Chike Kalu. Yes. Ms. Dominowski? Yes. Ms. Stolowski? Yes. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so all three um, contracts have been recommended to go forward to the contracts committee. Um, the next thing on the agenda is um, we had, for the new members, um, last spring we had been asked by the board chair to um, relook at our purpose um, and to reword it, and we did that. And we also included our measures of effectiveness. I just want to reread um, what the purpose that we came up with is, which is that the curriculum committee is responsible for reviewing new or revised curriculum, courses and materials presented by staff. Criteria for information presented to the curriculum committee includes brand new curriculum, instruction or assessment contracts, core or tier materials aligned with the superintendent's priorities, and professional learning for staff. So um, the reason I reread it is we also included as our measure of effectiveness, a framework. So some of you were, were at our um, discussion when we talked about whether, I don't know if it's a framework is the right word or a matrix, um, but basically to come up with a list of questions or a list of the information that when we have something that's new that we need to um, consider for recommendation, these are the things that you would like to have put into the presentation. Um, so we're not gonna do it now. I just want the board members to kind of think through that lens. Like what are your must need to know? Like, so um, some things we always keep asking over and over again, but we're trying to kind of get a little bit more proactive so that Dr. D. Donato can kind of direct her staff into what to make sure that they include up front. Um, Dr. D. Donato, do you wanna say anything else about that? Sure. Thanks, Ms. Lecter. So just again, to give like sort of a tangible, you know, example, um, sometimes when we um, identify a new curriculum um, or material or resource, um, there'll be questions around um, what research has been conducted about the effectiveness of this product or um, sometimes uh, 
has there been any study or data about another LEA in Maryland or someone similar to our size that has um, used this product? And so those would be some of those criteria that, you know, identifying for this matrix would be helpful. Of, you know, these are things that we should be part of a presentation so that, one, we're giving information ahead of time for the, you know, the committee to review that's useful, but at the same time, we're also then working with our vendors um, to ensure that they're providing that information to us on the front end versus sometimes when we have to go back and we're working with them to try to get that information. Um, so part of the matrix will allow us to be more um, productive and, and responsive to making sure that we're providing information that's important to you guys and then to the, you know, the greater community as a whole. Thank you for that. Um, any questions about what Dr. DiDonato or I just to kind of described as our next steps? So what I'd like to do, I know many of us have had, most of us have had a, a long day. So to generate brainstorm at quarter five um, is kind of think through the lens that Dr. DiDonato just talked about. Like in order for them to be responsive to our questions and the information we need, what would that look like? So whether you form it as a question or whether you just, you know, kind of bullet it out as far as, research, data, whatever that is that you want, and then send it to um, both of us in the next week or two. I'm thinking about a timeline. Our next meeting is on September 19th, which is like about a month away. So maybe take the next 10 days and I'll send a follow-up email to everybody to kind of give us some of that feedback about what are you looking for? And then we'll bring the, those ideas to the next meeting to discuss. Does that sound like a good timeline? Okay. All right. Um, I just want to let our new members know that normally this committee goes very late. Like we usually take up the whole hour or the whole hour and a half. So I'm going to end it like 20 minutes after we started, but I don't want you to think that that's like kind of our norm. It kind of fluctuates depending on the content that we're discussing and the type of contract and, and all of that. Tonight's contracts were just kind of easier ones um, and we got our feet wet on it. So just, I don't want you to think that when you get the calendar invite for an hour or so that it's all gonna end in 15 minutes. It usually, it doesn't work that way. And sometimes we've had to add extra ones, but um, again, this framework or the criteria that you're gonna help us with should help us to also um, kind of get those meetings done in a more timely fashion. So is there any further business from anyone at this point? Okay. Since um, then the last item on the agenda is announcements. The next curriculum committee meeting will be held on September 19th, 2024. And since there's no further business, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody, and enjoy your evening. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Good night. Thank Good you. night. Good night. Bye.